All right, well, we are back from break, still hanging out with Travis and Jimmy. You guys recover from that uh, horrible hindsight clip yet? I thought it was great. I thought it was really bad. He critiqued me on the fact that it was pretty bad. And I was just like, he, he said I couldn't critique it because I shouldn't be their biggest critic. And I'm just like, I'm my own biggest well, critic. I don't, well, I, and you play against them all the time in solo queue. Yeah. You have history with them. And it's so, not like. And so I'm just like, I don't think the play was good. And I don't think they should think it's that good either. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. Uh, speaking of things that aren't good, your interviews. You recently transitioned to uh, doing a lot of interviews, which I find. We, were you talking to him or to me? I don't know. I'm just looking at what? both of you. I mean, it applies to both. I can just look this way. It's, oh, okay, okay. Um, but it was interesting to see you go to an interviewer because you always had this kind of like, you were a streamer, pro player, analyst. It all was kind of like down the same path. And then out of nowhere, you become an interviewer. So what was that all about? Um, at the very beginning, I thought that I wanted to push myself a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And, I, and so the two immediate things that came out on top, or I had three options. I would, could stream an extra 100 hours a month. So at the moment, or at the time, I streamed like maybe 150 to 180 hours. So I could push that another 100 hours. Um, alternatively, I could do something else. Uh, I decided that I didn't want to push an extra 100 hours because I was kind of feeling a little bit like it might be too much. Burnt out, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I asked that, that option. And then I had the option to do the analyst ask for a ride or to be an interviewer. And the interviewer job kind of came out of nowhere. I thought in my mind that it's better to push your like into uncomfortable places to learn more about yourself and become, and like it's just an extra tool I can put on my toolkit, so to speak. No, that's good. Your interviews definitely made me uncomfortable, so I can I can see how that works. Yeah, there's a lot of room to grow. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised you watch my interviews, seeing as I watch none of yours. Really? <laughs> what the heck? I mean, well, I actually find it interesting. You guys have like really different styles where like your background comes through as like, you know, obviously a player where you're asking, like, what happened this game? Was this the right pick? What was with that rotation? And then Travis knows nothing about the game, so his background comes through where he's just asking, like, you know, what's up with you and your life? It's like two different styles. What style. if I was the, like, most brilliant uh, gameplay analyst ever? No one knew it. I just never wanted to ask those questions. I know you're not. I've known you too long to know to know that's not true. What the heck? We've seen you play League. It's it's not there. <laughs> yeah, it's... My Blitzcrank is fire. There's, there's nothing inside... The skull. What the? <laughs> League related. Sorry. League related. Okay. Thank you. So, so your your interview style was it something that just came naturally because that's your your background, or was it a conscious choice because you didn't think this like you know it's it's fine to have different styles of course. Was it something you wanted to do? I or think was it's natural. It's it's always like when I'm creating content or when I'm doing anything. I always want if I was the person watching the content, what would I like to see? So as the interviewer, it's always been from my, from my point like what are the questions I want to know answers to. So when I see like a draft go badly, I'm like, why'd you pick that there? Or I see this team fight happen, and I'm just like, what were the comm likes here? Like, what ended up happening in the middle of the game? And those are the type of questions that I really look forward to doing. And actually, I've had like a little bit of pushback from from the score when I was working there, being like, you gotta be like a little bit more toward like, oh, like, uh, like talking about the future. Like, you can't just get hung up only on the game because even from an interviewing standpoint, that's not like the best thing I can do. So it's been essentially just a split of growth for me as an interviewer. I watched my early interview, my very first like week of, and I was like, holy shit, that was so bad. Uh, like the first week was me just grinding out interviews. I did like nine to 13 interviews the first week just to get a feel for how interviewing was, and I could just like kind of improve week by week from there, like thinking about how to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think we joke a lot, but I really have appreciated Scar's entrance into the space because uh, I certainly don't tend to talk about the game that much. I like whenever I got into this whole thing, it was because I wanted people to become fans. So I try to get more of the personality and character and kind of the, the side stories or backstories going on. Uh, and that always gets a lot of people that are frustrated with me because they're like, you should ask more about the game or whatever. And they get angry and they're like, Travis's interviews suck. Now those people don't even have to watch my interviews. They can go watch his and learn about the game. And then the people that want to watch the stuff that I do can watch my stuff. I just hope everyone watches my interviews. Not everyone. I hope everyone watches okay. my interviews. Well, I mean, I, I personally appreciate both, even though I, I might watch a few more of Scara's, because I'm always, I'm always curious of many of the same things that you are. Uh, coming from, you know, coaching background, of course. Um, speaking of kind of growth this past year that you've gone through, there's like this whole new like kind of brand that's kind of sprung up around you and a couple of your friends, like the crew, that's like you, Dyrus, Scara, and Pokemon. Pokemon. I always mess that up. Uh, but you guys have like an AMA and stuff, so what's up with, with all of that and like the merch and the videos together? I think the, uh, I started like kind of a management agency. Uh, it's like a management firm with uh, me, my Chris, my manager, and like a couple other people um, who are very talented in their field. And we thought about how we wanted to approach like 
the sector. And so you know how I talked about, oh, you know, I wanted to do interviewing, I wanted to do YouTube content, Twitch content, like I want to be a content creator. On the side, I also wanted to do something else. And so I thought opening up a, my own organization would be kind of interesting. Uh, and so on that facet, um, we decided very early that very one of the, the first things I wanted to do was just combine a lot of like content creators to try to push for like bigger deals. And so uh, that's why I approached QD myself. Uh, I approached uh, all the other people and was just like, so what do you think? Like, what do you think about this? I promise you, the people I work with are really, really good because there's a lot of agencies that sp that spring up all the time with people right. who are like, oh, I have this, this so this so and so investor, oh, so and so this, but like the guys I work with are like way more talented, no offense, than the other agencies. And I feel like they have a much better vision of where to go. And so because of that, and their connections are insane. And so because of that, I think that uh, we're experimenting, like working together, coming together. And I think it's just more fun that way as well. Uh, if you look at other content, create, content spheres, like let's say Vine or YouTube, there's a lot of situations where all the people like live together and create content together. Right. There's a lot of like um, combined content in terms of YouTube channels or all kinds of like, just like, there's like vining houses or like a street where just viners live on or used to live on because vines dead now. Rip, rip but uh, uh, they used to live on. They used to like literally create content on a daily basis. And I think that I don't know if I, we want to go that far, but uh, we're just kind of experimenting and seeing what we can do, what we can. Do you need any investment? Because I could angel invest. I got like ten dollars. I could give you guys. If yeah. I, what does that get me for like ownership of, a, of you? Yeah. Can of I me? buy Scara for like twenty bucks? Like, oh what? man, dude, come on. I'm worth a little bit more. Than that. At least bump it to three figures, and then we'll talk. I think we, we're paying you for this interview in like fruit snacks. <laughs> I wish I was getting paid for this interview, Travis. Every year I talk to you, and I'm like, Travis, you gotta pay me for this, and you're just like. Which I, I can't I, do. I, and then ultimately decided to become your own interviewer just because you're yeah, like... Just to spite him. Yeah. Just because... Finally, I could get paid for my interviews, I it, guess is what... Exactly. <laughs> um, you also, I mean, one of the people in the group is Yuna, kind of. What's, uh, what's the deal with Yuna? Because I think a lot of people... He's the mascot. Right, no, no, he's, no. he's the team mascot. Actually, he's, uh, <laughs> he, wasn't he wasn't part of the team, but um, during the time that we were working around a bunch of like ways to think about, oh, how do we promote this? How do we do this? We actually found out that Yuna's... Uh, he's funny. No, he's not just funny. He's actually one of the, the best people I've ever met in terms of like being funny for social media. Like, right. There's... He understands memes on like a subconscious... This is going to sound so stupid. He, <laughs> he, he dreams in memes. No, he understands memes on like a sub subconscious level and he's so good at being able to put together like ideas that are, are consistent and I think he's just really, really good at what, what he does. If he wants a future in that type of like... Uh, production and planning, he has it guaranteed. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, the, the company I, I, I own was like so impressed. They're like, we'd like to work him to work for us in the future. He's really, really good at what, what he does. Oh. And we were, we were, I was surprised, and so was he. He was like, wow, I didn't think I, I could do this. Yeah, he didn't think he had any talents, I guess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like he shot all of the, the video for our commercial. Yeah, that he was came really up good. with the entire idea. He came up with all the, the, the like, like, he does Beyond the Rift Twitter. He does like his own Twitter. He does like, all the stuff leading up to the promo for um, are the advertisement as well, and he's just like really good at doing it. I, I don't, I don't know what else I could say. Right. Well, we don't have to say anything else because it's time to move on to our next segment where we're gonna bring up some funny clips of your past. Maybe Yuna can use some of these in future memes. The first one uh, is kind of more just pictures in a sense. You have like a cult following. Okay. Uh, we can take a look at some of them. Okay. Oh, this is pictures of me. Oh, the me running. Yeah, like, well, just everything. The Scara Pix subreddit as a whole. I mean, you, uh, what's, what's your take on this? I know, I know you have, like, a post I used on to there. Get, I used to get a little bit frustrated because I was like, do people just see me as an object rather than, like, a player? But now as I grew older, I was just like, oh, it's just funny. It's actually just super funny. And so now, like, I know... If ever I do something in public, like my last advertisement where I like cross dressed yeah, as a girl, yeah. instantly like the picture was on like the the sub like that subreddit and like I have a Discord as well and we have like a Scarab Pix section of the Discord. It oh, just like really? it just like spanned with that. How do I get into that? Because the Scar Picks, those that don't know, Scar Picks subreddit actually my subreddit, I made it. And I need more content. So if, if I could just get into that Discord, that'd be great. You'd have to pay me for the content. Travis. What the heck? Oh, finally turn it around back on him. <laughs> All right, well, the second clip is a real clip this time, uh, and it's one of your most famous moments uh, on stream, so let's, let's take a look uh, at is it. Is this the word video? Oh. You know. I know. Oh. 
They get I the reset. Oh, I need the reset so badly. <laughs> I get the reset. Oh, <laughs> get another reset. You know, I haven't, so I haven't watched this. God. I haven't watched this in years, actually. This is like what? This is one of the ones that like launched like yeah, your yeah. kind of like the, brand. This, as the Scar Award was like insane. I, I, I used. I actually used to get really mad at people who used to who used to meme that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I, I didn't want to be known as like the guy who like got the reset or like the scar of Bush. But again, over time, I, I really mellowed out. Now it's like it's just funny. Like straight up, it's super funny. I look back on this, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> holy moly, what was I thinking? And I, I just think it's really cool because it's just me. Well, yeah. yeah, and I think what's cool too is like you can see you're a lot more like comfortable streaming, whereas like not like you're uncomfortable there, but you're like kind of subdued. You're just like, oh, can I get the reset? <laughs> and then like now you're like popping off anytime anything happens. Yeah, like I think that it's just it's just like a window into the past. I guess is essentially yeah. what this kind of stuff is, and um, it's cool for me to watch. You know, I I'm glad that I. It was like part of leak history, I guess. Well, you kind of saw this last one coming. You mentioned it a little bit before. Probably your greatest stream moment ever. Here we go. Oh, this is the word. Yeah, you knew it. I already knew. I love this so this much. This is so good. This is like something everyone can relate over to. Here. Wow, can I really not get the word over? There's a word range on this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this game. Your face is so good. I hate this game so much. The pause, oh my the god. Hate the oh. It's like the perfect clip. Oh everyone's god. done that where they're like, what's uh, the range on this? Like, why isn't this working? And then. Why well, everybody is you just do it so quickly? You're like, oh, I fucked the first one up. I better fix it on the next one. And then. It's I like, just move my mouse a little yeah, yeah. bit over. Oh. Yeah. Like that, that clip is just like, I, everyone has had the moment where like they just colossally mess up and they're just like. I'm the biggest idiot ever. That was my moment, and it was recorded for everyone to see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we avoided one that I hear you're not a big fan of, which is the uh, "Are you here tomorrow, big?" or whatever. That's the <laughs> one that people like always bring up. I, 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 I just, I know you used to hate that one. Yeah, I think it's funny, but like, uh, it's like the same thing as a, like a, when you overtell a joke. Right. So like when you hear it so much, it's just like you, let's say your favorite song is Starboy right now. You you love it, but it plays every single day on the radio, eventually you're gonna start to hate, hate it. Like, Christmas songs are a good example, you know? They're already playing Christmas songs right now. By the time Christmas rolls around, you're gonna hate those songs. Yeah. Do you have anything that, is that like something that people came up to you and say a ton all the time? Because yeah. I know- Yeah, like, yeah all, at, at events, all, I've, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's like all the time, people used to come up to me and be like, you here tomorrow? I have one question, and I'm doing like a Q&A, are you here tomorrow big? And yeah. I'm just like, oh. It's like, oh, what an original yes, one. Yes, no. Maybe. Yeah, you just like can't get away from it. All right, well, moving on to the last thing. Uh, I've been asking a lot of people about their thoughts on the preseason, and obviously as a mid player, one of the big changes was to Katarina, obviously <laughs> avid Katarina player from the clip. Uh, what are your thoughts on her so far? Are you happy with the changes? Do you think she's strong? I think she's stronger than she was before, and she's got like a really high skill ceiling now. I think probably her skill ceiling is somewhere between, uh, she's like a top three champion, I think, in general, hardest difficulty to play. Because right. um, everything from your mouse position on where you want to shuffle around targets to, which has never been done before, actually, for any point and clickability, to uh, positioning where your Q lands. Um, like because all the setup. It, it, the setup for the Q is it directly, it's 350 range behind, the tar in the direction that you throw it. And so, like, you have to constantly, like, reposition in lane to get the angle to do it. I think that the champion is way more fun to play way harder to play, and I think that her laning is, like, she can outplay people a lot better. So if you're better than the other player, um, you could just make Cat look like... So, so, so overall, so you're good. very happy with, with it. I, I think I would rate it something like an 8 out of 10. And so Ooh. it's not, like, exceptionally, like, it's not just like, wow, this is amazing. But it's, like, anything above a, a 7 or above for me is really good. Give me a 10. Like... Has there ever been a 10 for you? Or like what's the closest to a 10? I, I think, I think the, the, I, the concept of like Oriana or Lee Sin as a champion is like very close to a 10 for me. Lee Sin especially is like straight 10. I think the entire kit, the champion itself is so fun to play. I understand like the numbers may be broken or like... Whatever, oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. But the, I, the champion itself and the way you play it feels so fluid. There's a reason why he's got a 30% pick rate right now. And it's not just due to his strength, it's due to his 
it's you're, it's still fun. I mean, to play. I mean, yeah, there were times where he was weak and people still spammed him just because yes. he's such a like a signature champion to play. Yeah, and I think that champions like both of those are just are not only unique but feel very very good to play. And those are champions I'd rate close. Lee sends a ten, Orion is probably like a nine. And or the idea of Oriana is really really unique, and I, I really respect whoever ended up making that champion. Right. Uh, speaking of other things from the preseason, you're not a big jungler, I don't think. Have you played in the uh, new jungle? Do you like the plants? That kind of stuff. Uh, I I hated the plants when I first played, <laughs> and then now I'm like neutral. I think the plants are just whatever. You know, they're an extra yeah. thing added on top. I don't think it takes too much away from the game, and I think it adds like some humor. Essentially, some, like some like just yeah, spice, the, some humor. Like essentially, I just think of it as humor because it's just like well, the blast plants just like wa like let me run away or like the the healing plant just randomly spawned here and I guess I picked it up and that's it. Like I just yeah. think there are strategic options with it, but for me right now, I just it's just like a humor. It's like a laughing thing. So my final question uh, about the preseason patches, I personally feel like it might be a little on the shallow end for preseason patches that we've seen. There's no big item reworks, there's no big mastery rune reworks, no uh, in, uh, objective changes like dragons or turrets. And so it really does feel on the lighter end. Are you concerned at all that without maybe the proposed 10 ban change system that with no lane swaps, next season of League is a little boring because it wasn't uh, like a huge change that we're used to seeing in the preseason? Oh, next season is going to be so boring without the 10 bands. But I, I'm like pretty positive it's coming, so I'm not too Yeah, worried. right, I'm not worried, but yeah, I'm yeah. saying that like when you see just this patch, you're kind of like, that's it? Well, it's more like, I expect them to change more. Like, yeah, that's what, like, yeah. What, what, what's, no, like the original preseason patch could have been bigger. Right. But I thought the original size of the patch was like, I did a patch preview, it took two hours. Like two, like, <laughs> two hours and like 20 minutes. And then... I thought after that, you know, the patches would have like huge changes. Like as soon as this item's broken, all right, we're just gonna change it, or we're gonna adjust it because it's not good enough. And so it's like, oh well, okay, well where's my Z buff? Where why is Courage of the Colossus still in the game, like right. at its current strength? Why is Redemption Locket both still in the game at its current strength? Right? Why did Rise of Syndra not get nerfed yet? Like why is Jace still a thing? Like why? Like all these why questions that I'm just like, I, I have a list on my last patch preview, seven to eight things I wanted that to you see. want to change. Yes. None of them were hit. And I was just like, okay, like I understand like why you may not want to hit these now, but you're gonna need to eventually. At least half the list. Real quick before we start wrapping up, Travis, just give me your thoughts, obviously on the high level like Scara, but do you think that these kind of changes we need bigger ones in the preseason or do you think it's fine? No, I mean I like big changes because I like the feeling of whenever the next season comes around, it's really cool to be like, all right, everything's brand new again. Like the yeah, rosters are, are brand new, doing? the game is brand new, et cetera. And I think this is a good time to do it. Um, and so it's, I mean, it's always kind of cool for me to see just like huge changes and like how everyone reacts to it. And before, before we close out the show, I have a, a final question, which is, Scar, how do I get a t-shirt that says my name and oh, has right. my face on it? Because that would be, how do I get one of those made? Oh, uh, well, we just launched our new merch store. Uh, it's verifiedmerch.com. And, uh, actually this idea came up out of nowhere at the very, very end of the thing. And cause we were just thinking about shirt ideas and they're just like, what do you think about this? I'm just like. Let me see the mock-up. And then they showed it to me. I'm like, that's hilarious. Sure, just run with it. And so I'm kind of happy with the design. You know, I don't think I'm vain enough to wear this every day. But, who but knows? On, a, on a show that a bunch of people are going to watch, you'll, you'll wear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. promote. Okay. Sem promote himself. I want to get uh, that shirt. Check out his Twitter. Check out his new uh, store for all his stuff.